I'd imagine still now, when you think about it or when you see clips like that, it still resonates so deeply. Of course it does, yeah. It was um, uh, probably the most profound moment of my life. Now, I was aware, of course, he was a survivor, but like lots of other survivors, now tragically dwindling, um, you know, he didn't really talk about it. And so you've got little shadowy suggestions, spectres of a story. And so this was just the most profound and extraordinary gift to go and retrace his journey and to see the physical places that he and so many other millions grew up where they lived and that these communities were wiped out. And of course, they lived at a time where there were sort of thin veneers, just as we have now, of democracy, of safety. You know, he was had a very powerful Jewish identity, as lots of his friends and family mm -hmm. did. But of course, the communities where it all started in Germany and in Austria believed above all else that they were entirely assimilated until gradually mm -hmm. all of the laws crept in. The thin veneers of democracy that you believe that you're safe and that only takes one small change and then gradually what's appalling becomes normalised. That's the story. And it's very frightening considering some of the conversations we unbelievably have to have on this programme. Mm -hmm. Things that are going on in politics, MPs feeling haunted uh, because they're Jewish in, in various mm. parties and the Labour Party is particularly, you know, mm. embroiled in that. Um, it does make you wonder, doesn't it, why? Why? Is it because do you think so many survivors, like you say, didn't want to speak of it, that somehow the, the, ev the, the kind of eyewitness evidence is getting mm. lost? Well, there are two answers to that. The first one is, undoubtedly, as you say, across the political spectrum, there is this creeping shadow of anti-Semitism mm. re-emerging. And there are a variety of reasons for that, none of which are ever justified or justifiable. Also, what we found increasingly in politics, again on both sides, and again for all sorts of reasons, are pe people picking up glibly the stone of the word Nazi mm. and throwing it at one another without understanding what that word means. And, you know, one of the things that I'm really excited, the second answer to your question, is that it's Holocaust Memorial Day on Sunday, and today, there is an opportunity for students and anybody to sign into a webcast. We've got over 50,000 people who are going to be hearing this morning from a Holocaust survivor, from Harry Spiro. You are, are no longer ever able to retain any of the underlying reasons that maybe led you to have some of the thoughts that lead to anti-Semitism, nonsense about conspiracy, that sort of thing. But above all else, what you take away when you're gifted the chance to hear from a survivor is where hate can lead. And they articulate that in the most powerful way, which is why it's such a chance, especially for young people, to listen to what Harry's going to be talking about this morning. And it has resonances not just for anti-Semitism and combating that, but prejudice across the board, Islamophobia, any kind of behaviour which leads to prejudice against people. You listen to it. And, you know, when I listened to Harry, when I listened to Harry, who'd been through so much, whose family had been wiped out, perhaps all of us would intuitively assume that we'd retain a degree of rage and anger mm. and retribution, that it would, in every way, cloud every feature of your life, that sort of incurable darkness. But like my grandfather and like him, what's so powerful about their stories is that they are infused, infused as well with just joy and hope. And, you know, I'm hoping and I suspect the young people listening to Harry today, please do sign up. You can do it on the Holocaust Education Trust website. will come away with a sense of this. Whatever you've been through, you can look at humanity in a positive way. And that courage starts with you. When you hear any form of anti-Semitism of any kind, when you hear prejudice of any kind, when you see bullying, it's up to you to have the courage to stop it. Because you may think, we may think, we may be complacent to think that we live in a democratic society and that sort of thing can't happen again. But we all know too well how thin the veneers, how thin that is and how possible it is unless we all, regardless of background or creed, combat it. We start, courage starts with us. We can make sure that this never happens again. That's what Holocaust Memorial Day is about on Sunday and listening to people like Harry 
who are increasingly dwindling resource. And it's an amazing opportunity to hear a first account, a first account testimony. And I'm really proud to be here today to mm. give Harry that platform and thank you all for, um, you know, making sure well, that a, people know about it. It's an incredibly important topic. What time mm. are you doing the webcast? Right, it's this morning. Um, I'm going to be at the school from 8 o'clock. You can sign up. Um, do try and sign up before 10 o'clock, where I think we're going to be starting. So there is time. And the Holocaust Education Trust are uh, just an amazing organisation. They work with teachers and with students. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Interestingly, on that subject, and there's mm. a big football match uh, this evening, mm. which I'm sure you're excited about, uh, <laughs> but it's the second leg of the semi-final. Right. Chelsea are playing against Spurs. But the, the, the yeah. poli uh, Chelsea have urged their fans um, to, against anti-Semitic behaviour and chanting, because, yeah. of course, uh, there tends to be quite a lot when it comes to Spurs. Right. I mean, that, that's, that's another area that is very, very difficult mm. to try and police, and that's one you're talking about you need people to stand up. What's your Racism, opinion? homophobia, violence um, is never, ever excusable. You know, one of the things that's interesting, I remember that last Chelsea game, you know, my mm. family are a big Tottenham Hotspur supporters and they were at that game. And I have a friend who actually spoke to and confronted one of the um, Chelsea fans. Here's the tragedy of it. He was with his young son and they were joining in. And by the way, what they were doing was making the sounds of the gas chambers. Oh my now that's, to some extent, oh if you're a person who uh, is normal and kind and has a family, it's almost impossible to understand why you would do that. Uh, what I think most people discovered is that when people engage in that sort of behaviour, I'm not entirely sure they even know mm. what they're doing. Mm. That um, with football violence or football cruelty, it's about goading the other side. But what troubles me is they may not know about the Holocaust. When you listen mm. to somebody like Harry a this child. morning... Right, but you can't ever do that again. Mm. I'm not sure that child even knows that he's taking mm. part in anti-Semitism. Then you take the child and say, do you know what that is? Do you know why that matters? Mm. Do you know what happened to over a million and a half young children of your age? And I think people have forever changed. And, of course, actually, in, in terms of Chelsea Football Club, there is a, some good news that, um, with, uh, in response to some of that anti-Semitism, um, they worked in partnership with the Holocaust Education Trust. And, actually, the Chelsea footballers um, are given the were given the opportunity some time ago to listen and hear from a Holocaust survivor. And, in fact, a lot of football clubs have been mm. working in partnership with the HGT and they're forever changed. Because I think on the terraces, when that happens, there is an aspect of it where some people think mm. it's part of the banter. Oh, right. It's accepted. Sure. Do you know what I mean? They don't realise that. So right. it's so important to make that clear sure. on all sides. Right. I yeah. feel sure, you know, I, I meet people, despite what people think about me, generally we sort of assume their good intentions. I know it's, it's very difficult to do <laughs> and increasingly challenging, but I think by and large you're right. Mm. And that's why HET is important. And whomever you are, from whatever background you come from, listening today really will give you the chance to, to learn more. If you heard that story, that young person I was referring mm. to, or the mm. father, it, you couldn't possibly make no. those sounds no. or engage in that sort of cruelty because you'd know where it came God, from. I and I think you're right. Anyway. I'm sure yeah. it's true. It's a hugely important thing that you're doing. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Like a, a really interesting um, sort of webcast that you're doing. So it'll be live at. Well, you can get on the live website early. Get on now. Um, sign up and, 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 and ten o'clock. Hopefully, right. Speak to teachers at school. Um, there are, like I say, over about fifty thousand people, mm. and it really is a chance. And it's. You know, I think people sometimes are frightened by the magnitude or perhaps the violence of the story involved. It's mm. not quite like that. When you listen to Harry, above it's all else... Personal. Right, but you're moved by his story of mm. hope and of possibility. And not just where this can lead, but above all else, that we don't need to ever to surrender to prejudice, that we really have cause to be optimistic. Harry's story today at 10 o'clock on the website is really more than anything else an articulate expression up. of that. So, right. thank, thank you. you. Lovely no, to see you, no, Thank you for coming and sharing.